every year, we grow older. Sometimes we celebrate with loved ones, sometimes we celebrate alone. But every birthday also means we are getting closer to death. Maybe some of us have wished we could stop time, but unfortunately, that's just a fantasy. Time will keep moving forward even after all of humanity is gone. But does time actually have an end? And if it does, what is at the end of time? Late at night, we cannot sleep because our minds are filled with questions. Suddenly, someone familiar appears in our room. The face is unmistakable, like looking into a mirror but reflecting an older version of ourselves. The visitor extends an invitation to explore the entire timeline, from its very beginning to its distant end. Naturally, curiosity takes us over and we accept the invitation. A hand gestures towards something unseen, something that holds the key to understanding the end of time. The Cosmic Calendar In the Cosmic Calendar, we try to compress 13.8 billion years of the universe age, from the Big Bang to today, into a single year. One cosmic second is almost equal to five centuries in real life, and one cosmic day spans tens of millions of years. Alright, let's explore the Cosmic Calendar. At the start of the year, there's a massive explosion, the Big Bang. The universe is born, and for 14 minutes, nothing is visible. The first atoms appear 28 seconds later. The first generation stars ignite and galaxies take shape. Our solar system doesn't even exist until the last day of August. December is the month of life. We can now see multicellular creatures and the ancestors of all living things emerge. But December is also the month of death. Three mass extinctions wipe out millions of species from Earth. And on the very last day, just before midnight, humans appear. We invent writing, the wheel, build pyramids, overthrow rulers, wage wars against our own kind, turn the remains of ancient creatures into light, and finally, create technology that can unite the entire world. Or maybe, destroy it. All of this happens in just the last 14 seconds. That's the Cosmic Calendar, a tool we created to try to grasp the age of the universe by comparing it to a single year in our own calendar. But now, imagine if the Cosmic Calendar has ended and we're about to turn the page to a brand new one. In just a fraction of a second, Earth will get even hotter due to the climate crisis. But Chernobyl will finally be safe again. East Africa will split from the African continent, Africa and Europe will collide, and all the continents will keep shifting positions until, eventually, they merge back together, forming Pangaea Ultima. And that's just the first week. But here's the big question. What happens to humanity? Can we survive the second year of the cosmic calendar? The problem is, Earth will go through events that threaten human survival. From asteroid impacts to massive star explosions near Earth, and eventually, the Sun heating up so much that it melts the planet's surface. We won't be able to call this blue planet home anymore. If civilization is to continue somehow, we will have to find another home in space. Now, if humanity manages to survive until mid-April, we will witness something absolutely mind-blowing. Our galaxy and its long-time neighbor, which have been slowly drifting closer for ages, will finally collide. The supermassive black holes at their centers will circle each other until they merge, forming a brand new galaxy. Does this mean the end of our solar system? Surprisingly, no. Our solar system will still exist, but it will be flung far out to the edge of the galaxy. So, maybe we don't need to worry too much about the galactic collision. Instead, what we should really fear is our own star, the thing that has sustained all life on this planet, the Sun. Because at the same time, our Sun, which is still in a way a teenager, will continue growing into adulthood. 
it'll expand, heat up, and shine even brighter. On May 22, it will transform into a red giant. See, stars burn brightly because they have fuel. Hydrogen and helium. Once that fuel runs out, the core shrinks while the outer layers swell up. This happens to all small to medium-sized stars, including our Sun. It will keep expanding until July 19, when it finally swallows our beloved blue planet. But the Sun's transformation in the second year of the cosmic calendar is not over yet. The red giant will continue growing and heating up until eventually its outer layers drift away. Then, on August 14, all that remains of our Sun will be its core. The Sun will become a white dwarf, a slowly cooling, shrinking remnant, eventually shrinking down to the size of Earth. The universe keeps expanding, faster and faster, until even our neighboring galaxies fade out a few. Everything in the universe drifts apart, existing in total isolation. Even atoms won't be spared. Some theories suggest that protons, the tiny building blocks of all matter, will eventually decay. If that's true, then one by one, everything left in the universe will disintegrate and vanish. But scientists are still debating this. If the theory is correct, then everything in the universe will break down until the only things left are black holes. And for an unimaginable stretch of time, black holes will rule the universe. How long? Try a pen followed by 100 zeros. That's how long they will last. But even black holes aren't eternal. Slowly, they too will die evaporating away until they completely disappear. But what if the theory is wrong? If protons don't decay, then the universe's lifespan will be even longer. And after the last supermassive black hole fades into nothing, only one thing will remain at the very edge of time. Remember the sun? After countless cosmic centuries, it's about to change one last time. Our sun, which had already become a white dwarf, keeps cooling and dimming, until it nearly reaches absolute zero. At this point, it has transformed into a black dwarf. It no longer emits visible light, and inside, its particles are packed together under immense pressure. For trillions of years, hundreds of cosmic years, nothing happens. But then, suddenly, two carbon atoms fuse. Thousands, even tens of thousands of cosmic years later, another fusion occurs, this time with oxygen atoms. Fast forward billions more years, and another fusion event finally takes place. This time, it creates a radioactive atom, which over time begins to decay. This process of atomic fusion and decay continues for an unimaginably long time. Even as the universe evolves, black holes form, exist, and eventually, evaporate. The reactions inside this black dwarf keep going, for at least 10 followed by a thousand zeros years. Yeah, a 10 with a thousand zeros. If you try to display that number on a screen like this, it would not fit. The string of zeros would stretch out the length of an entire football field, a time span so vast that no analogy could possibly make us grasp its length. Would it be like comparing the lifespan of civilization to a blink of an eye? No, that's still far too short. This is longer than the entire age of the universe. Even compared to black holes, it's orders of magnitude longer, about 10 with 900 zeros years. Eventually, however, the black dwarf loses stability and collapses. Then, an immense explosion, a supernova. This is the final event in the sun's existence in the universe. And after that, no one knows what happens next. The universe might remain unchanged for a long time. Or maybe, this is the moment when the universe finally ends. But in this emptiness, does time stop? Has time finally reached its end, now that there is nothing left?
We are back in our room alone. The familiar atmosphere, the ticking clock, the sunlight starting to stream through the window, everything feels just as it was. Yet, at the same time, something feels different. One thing is clear. Now we know that the universe will exist for an unimaginably long time. Writing down the human lifespan might just take two digits. But to describe the lifespan of a dark, lifeless star, it takes thousands. On the scale of cosmic time, all of human history is nothing more than a tiny dot. So, does our existence even matter? Do all of humanity's achievements mean anything in the grand scheme of time? But maybe precisely because our time is so brief, we have the rare chance to witness the wonders of the universe. Maybe that's why every second matters.